down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where from cleansing of sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood of life singing glory to his name. I'm singing glory to his name, precious name, singing glory to his name, precious name. Well, there to my heart was the blood of life, singing glory to his name. I'm singing glory to his name, precious name, singing glory to his name. Precious name, well, there to my heart was the blood of life singing glory to his name. I'm singing glory to his name, precious name, singing glory to his name, precious name, well, there to my heart was the blood. Apply singing glory to his name. Amen. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Amen. Amen. Wednesday. Wednesday. Hump day. Yes, it's Wednesday. I believe uh, the ninth, I think it is. Day of uh, September, 2020, Hump Day. Yeah, yeah, Hump Day. All right, all right. For those of you who are working, you just got two more days before you can reach your weekend of rest. All right, and this is the day that God Bethel AME Church has uh, our weekly Bible study. Uh, welcome, 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 God Bethel uh, AME Church members and if any friends are listening this is our weekly Bible study. Yes, as you know, we're in the 11th chapter of St. John, and we're all the way down. We started at the first verse, but now we're all the way down to the 33rd verse. We're going to go as far as the 44th uh, verse, and uh, we'll, we'll stop off there from the study of Lazarus, and then we'll go to something else after that. We'll see how far we get today. Uh, and possibly we may have to wrap the last part up next week. Well, we may get it today, but maybe next week, and if then, then we'll move on to uh, something else. But uh, for right now, for right now, join me in a word of prayer. Our Father and God, we come before your throne of grace. Thank you once again, Heavenly Father, for this day that you've allowed us to see. We thank you, O oh God, for your grace. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your steadfastness toward us. Thank you for your faithfulness toward us. Thank you for delivering us through your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, the greatest gift that we could ever receive. Now, Lord, we thank you for through our faith in him, we are offered salvation and our right to the tree of life. We thank you for your word. We thank you, God, for your spirit that, that dwells with us and teaches us all truths. And we thank you, God, for manifesting yourself we ask you to continue to manifest yourself in your word to us that we will be better equipped to go into the hedges and the highways and the byways, proclaiming the good news of the liberating gospel of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We want to search and wrestle and understand the scriptures. Uh, in the gospel or in the entire word of God. Now, just quickly, uh, if you remember, we started off, uh, this is where Lazarus was sick and Jesus got the information. And <clears throat> even though he did, uh, got the information he was sick, they never told him he was dead, that he was sick. And remember he abode a couple of more days and and uh, he said to his disciples, come on, uh, and they took another couple of days, I guess, to get there, two or three days, however long the trip was. But as you know, uh, he noticed that by the time he got there, of course, that Jesus was dead. But he had told his disciples already that he was dead. Yeah, so that he knew already. 
Oh, that shows his divineness. He already knew. So they're on their way back, and they get close enough where Martha runs out of the house and meets him. Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother wouldn't have died, and they had a little exchange. And do you believe that your brother will rise again? And she's thinking uh, that he's talking about the, in the last days and resurrection. And she don't, she don't see where Jesus is going to raise him now. Oh, my goodness. And so uh, as they have their confrontation, she leaves him and then runs back and tells Mary, yes, tells Mary that, oh, Jesus is out there and he's on his way and looking for you, calling for you. Mary goes out. And tells him the same thing. But I remember last time I said she was more humble. I mean, she ran out and, and fell to his feet. Remember, she was the same one that wiped his feet after anointing his feet with her hair. Yes, wiped his feet with her hair. Remember we said that? So we were, I talked for just a minute about the humbleness at Jesus' feet uh, as she was before and as she is now. Uh, she fell at his feet. When you look at the 32nd verse, she fell at his feet when she saw him. Okay, she said the same thing. If you had been here, same thing Martha said, my brother would not have died. So Jesus uh, has delayed his entry, but finally gets there because he wants the glory of God and the glory of the Son of Man to be uh, a witness by these people. So remember I told you in the beginning that we're going to see uh, it's a lot of stories in this uh, uh, glory of the Son of God, Son of Man, uh, uh, day versus night. Remember when he talked about day, we talked about day versus night when he said, let's go back uh, to Jeru uh, 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 Bethany, to Jerusalem, and uh, light versus darkness. We talked about that. Um, uh, the resurrection and the life that he said he was, the resurrection. And now the last part of this, we're going to get life from death. Mm, just look, we're going to get life from death now. All right, all right. Let's look now from the 33rd verse. 33rd verse. Remember now, Mary has told Martha and Martha has went out. The people have followed her. Mary has went out after Martha told her Jesus was, was calling for her. And Mary goes out to meet him, humbles herself. The people are following him. They think, following her, they think, remember I, we, we they figure she's going to the grave, but she's actually going to Jesus. Now, in the 33rd verse, after she's met him, an humble to says, and she says, my brother wouldn't have died if you had been here, Lord. I'm, I was saying, look how Jesus reacts. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, St. John 11th chapter, St. John 11th chapter, 33rd verse. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, 33rd verse, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in his spirit and was troubled. That's the way he reacted, right? St. John, 11th chapter, 33rd verse. He groaned in his spirit and was troubled. Wow. So you got to think about that. When you read the scripture, stop and think about what you read. Oh, so he's troubled. Did something to him. He see them crying and then and, and uh, she's crying, and, and uh, he's troubled by that. Groans in his spirit, and he was troubled. Hmm. My goodness. Uh, uh, don't they know that, that, that Jesus is here now? Oh, my goodness. So he's troubled at all of this that they show. All of this that they show that Lazarus has passed on, but Jesus has come. And they're not thinking that Jesus actually is coming to do anything. They think it's it's all over and the time has passed. So they're crying and Jesus is troubled by that. Mm, I'm here now. Look unto me. But they're crying and troubled. Crying and, and weeping. And therefore, Jesus groans in his spirit and is troubled. That death has them boggled up like this. And they're down now and out, even though Jesus is on the scene. They're still crying. So Jesus says to him, where have you laid him? He didn't even talk no more. That's it. Y'all let me let me get to it. Let me get to let me get right to it because I see now y'all ain't y'all picking it up yet. So he says, Where is he? Where have you laid him? Well, come and see, Jesus. And then part of Jesus' reaction after that, 
35th verse, Jesus wept. Oh, my goodness. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. 36th verse. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? You know, Jesus had opened the eyes of the blind back in the ninth chapter of St. John. And they probably was remembering that when he opened the, uh, told the man to go wash and all that. And, uh, you know, he opened the, 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 the man's eyes in the ninth uh, chapter or a couple of chapters back. And they're saying, well, why couldn't he do this then? Mm, my goodness. So that 35th, 6th, and 7th verse, Jesus weeps as well. Uh-huh. And they figure he's weeping because, oh, how he loved him. But that ain't why he was weeping. Oh, how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man, oh, he's weeping now because he loved him. But why, why couldn't he have saved him? Hmm. Well, first of all, there was no reason for him to save him, but there was a reason for him to let him die, physically, that is. Let him go to sleep, as Jesus said, and to us physically die. Because the glory of God and the Son of Man had to be witnessed. So he's got to tarry until Nazareth dies, right? We've already mentioned that. So he could have saved him, but that wasn't the glory that he wanted everybody to see. He could have healed him. That wasn't the glory. He's about to bring life from death. That's what he wants them to see. So if Jesus comes after the fact, he's already dead, after the fact, then it is for them to see and us to see that there's something evidently about to happen or else Jesus would not need to visit Lazarus. He's already dead. Mm, that's why he weeps. He weeps out of concern. Yes, 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 concern how they're feeling and how death has overtaken them. Like it's the end, and it's not the end. So Jesus weeps for the people, weeps for Martha and Mary, weeps for all of the, 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 the Jews and, and, and others that are gathered around, weeps for them, not for Lazarus, weeps for the people. Y'all don't get understand. <laughs> and I'm so serious in my caring for you, it causes me to weep. Mm. Just like they talk about in Hebrews, the fifth chapter, in verse, I think it is seven, five, six, and seven, when they talk about uh, 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 Christ and, and, and going before God for the people with, with crying, weeping. Oh, my goodness. He cares that much for us. Is that serious to him? Nature is crying. Yes. Hallelujah. God cares for us. Jesus weeps for the people. They don't, they don't realize he's weeping for them. He ain't weeping for Lazarus just because he loved him. No, 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 no. Weeping for them. <laughs> I want y'all to see the glory. So therefore, in that 35th, he weeps. And then they say, oh, how he loved him, but they're off track. And the 37th verse, why can't, why, why didn't he help him before that? Why couldn't he? Yeah, that's the reason why. The glory of the Son of Man must be revealed. The glory of God, the glory of the Son of Man must be revealed. Ah, in the 38th verse, Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Martha and Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. 38th and 9th verse, Jesus is continually groaning. Mm, Y'all don't believe me. Continually feeling for the people, not for Lazarus, but for the people. Groaning in himself. Oh my goodness, these folk need to see. Groaning in himself. Coming to the grave. Had him in a cave with a stone in front of it. Hmm. Almost kind of like Jesus had the stone rolls on me. Almost kind of the same thing, huh? 
Jesus said, take ye away the stone. But Martha lets him know, well, Lord, I don't know if you want to do that. He's been dead for, he's been in there for, I don't know if you want to do that, Lord. Well, it's a great smell, as you know. We know it's going to be a great smell. So, Lord, I don't know if you really want to do that. Mary didn't say it. Martha did. You know, Martha, Martha is busy. Martha jumps in. Like she's raring to go. So she's quick, like Peter. You're quick to tell him, Lord, wait a minute now. <laughs> Lord, I tell you, you might not want to do that. Jesus says, take away the stone. Lord, you may not want to do it. Hmm. You may not want to do it. We don't have to tell the Lord you may not want to do. We, some, I believe that some of us would probably do. You know, Lord tell you to do something and you the Lord, are you sure about, you sure I need to go down that way on that street? He wouldn't tell you if he wasn't going to protect. He wouldn't tell you if he, he doesn't have a mission for you. You got to go where God tells you, do what God tells you, I'm saying. Do what the Lord tells you. Roll away the stone. Lord, I don't know. He tells us something, some, 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 some people, some of us. Oh, Lord, I said, Lord, we want to question the God. Whoa, oh, Lord, you sure? Them folk over there, such and such a thing. They this way, they that way. Lord, I tried to go do this and do that, but you know that ain't going to work. Lord, I put that, you know, it's just, that's how we go. A lot of people. He said, took away the stone. Martha says, Lord, I don't think so. I don't believe you want to. You sure? Hmm. Oh, Jesus is very sure. Take away the stone because the, that should tell them right there something is going to happen. But they just don't see that. They don't see. No, ain't nobody raised nobody from no dead. Certainly that's not what he's going to do. What in the world could he be interested in moving a grave when somebody is dead? What is it that he's going to do? Well, they're about to see. Jesus says to take it away. And they say, but Jesus then answers her after she tells him that, uh, Martha, well, Martha, don't you remember? In the 40th verse, he says unto her, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. So he tells Martha, remember, we had a long conversation, Martha, when you ran out to meet me. Before I even could get close, even got over here. You came out, you heard I was coming. You came out to meet me. And remember, me and you had a, 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 a little dialogue there. And I told you, <laughs> your brother will rise again. Hallelujah. And I wasn't talking about in the resurrection at the last days. We're not talking about the last days. He's going to be resurrected now. Jesus says, I am the, I'm here. I am going to resurrect him. She didn't understand that. She she said, well, I know that in the last days it's going to be resurrected. And, 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 and Jesus told her, that's the last days, but I'm talking about the resurrection is here now. <laughs> Our lives can be resurrected. Life from death. We can be resurrected. Don't have to wait to the last day to be good. You don't, hey, now is the time. Jesus is here. Oh, hallelujah. And since he's here, as we was telling Martha when they had the, the dialogue in the previous verses, she was the first one to talk to him about it. And he says, she says, in the last day of the resurrection, yeah, after he told her your, your uh, brother will rise again. Yeah, in the last, I know he'll do that. Jesus saying, oh, that, that might happen too in the last days. There will be some resurrection in the last days. But I am the resurrection, and I'm here now. But they don't, don't get it. Martha didn't quite get it. Mary, none of them have gotten it yet. I am the resurrection, and I done told you. That 40th verse, I done told you you're going to see the glory of God. I asked you, did you believe? Oh, you said so, but I asked you, did you believe? Martha, don't matter how long he's been dead. <laughs> Something's about to happen if you, you'll see the glory of God if you just do as I tell you. Just do as God tells us, and we'll see the glory of the Son of Man. We'll see the glory of God. Just do what God tells us to do. Just roll a stone away. Roll that thing away from your life. Roll it away. Whatever blocking you, roll it away. Hallelujah. Because he's going to bring life from death. You think your situation, oh my. Here we go. In the 41st verse, after he told her that, 
Then they took the stone away from the place where the dead was laid. Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Hmm. Well, well, well. So, they finally rolled the stone away. Finally rolled the stone away. Finally rolled the stone away. And Jesus starts to pray. Talking to God. Talking to the Father. He starts talking to the Father. Now, uh, he says to the Father that uh, in that in that forty the second half, last half of that forty first verse, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. So he's all right. you you heard me already. You already heard me. You already heard me. You already heard me. You heard everything I've told them. Uh huh. You've heard it all. You always heard me. You sent me. But I'm going to say it over again only for the sake of the people around me. He's going to say it now for the sake of the people around me. They're going to pray out loud where they can hear it. They can hear him. He's going to do it for the sake of everybody around him. Oh, my goodness. Not because he's afraid. Or he's wondering if the father has heard him, but for the rest that's around him. So, 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 so if he prays where they can hear him, then they'll be able to tell others after they see what's going to happen and know that, that the father has sent him. Then the word's going to spread. Like in the 17th chapter of John, a few chapters over, and around the, the 20th, what is it, ninth, let me look, the 19th and 20th verse, hmm, 17th chapter of John, my goodness, yeah, where it was 18th verse, 19th verse, 20, 18th verse, 17th, uh, the 18th chapter of John, 18th chapter of John, and 18th verse, 18 and 18, as thou hast sent me unto the world, even so I have also sent them unto the world. He's praying for the ones he sent out, right? 19th verse. And for their sakes I sanctify myself that they may also, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them which also shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Hmm. Boy, that 20th and 21st verse, my goodness. Same thing happening here in this 40th verse. Or rather, in the 41st, end of the 41st and 42nd verse. I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I know that thou hearest me also. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. In John 17, what I just read, those other three verses uh, that I read, that 20, 21st verse especially, same thing. Praying for someone else so that they tell somebody else what they witness. And that's what he does here. Lifted up his eyes. In the 41st verse, said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. My, my, my. Praise the Lord. Therefore, um, he's not praying for himself, for he already knows that he is deity, but he needs to convince the others. So therefore, he's praying for the people. He groaned and weeped for the people. That's what he did. Out of his sincerity for them, God so loved the world, out of his sincerity for them, he groaned, he wept 
moved and troubled in himself for the people, for Mary and Martha and the Jews alike, that they may pay attention and realize who he is and who has sent him. I am the son of man, but I'm also the father, son of the father. And the father has sent me. Praise the Lord has sent me. <clears throat> so in the 41st verse, Father, I thank thee that thou has heard me. 42nd verse, and I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou has sent me. Mm -hmm. So he says, he said it for the people. You know, he said, believest thou that you're going to see this, the glory of the Son of God? Not, he ain't trying to convince himself. He wants to convince them. It's for they sake, their sake, that he said in the 40th verse, if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. In the 41st verse, at the end of it, Father, I thank thee that thou has heard me. I said it, in that 42nd verse, I said it for the benefit of them. I know you heard me, and I know that you sent me, and I know that you're going to perform. I know that you're going to answer. I know what you, I know, I know, I know what we're going to do. I know you heard me but for the benefit of them. Mm. And when he thus had spoken, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forward for the benefit of them. And to know that he is right in saying he's the son of God. And the father has sent him. He's going to call Lazarus forward. Mm. Who does that? Who goes to the dead and calls them forward? Don't nobody go call nobody even in the grave forward. But for them to, to know who he is, he allowed Lazarus to die, physically, to die, go to sleep, in other words. For the Lord, you just sleeping. Hey, he's going to wake you up. Remember, he said that earlier in these verses. Uh, he's going to come wake up. We just sleep. Lazarus is sleeping. Reminiscent of what's going to happen to us, we'll be sleeping in that first death. We're going to be just sleeping. When we die physically here, we're going to just be sleeping. That's all. That's all. And so, therefore, he knows that God has always heard him, but for the benefits of those around and then more who could believe, would believe on their testimony. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call Lazarus. <laughs> Y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm going to call. Y'all got to stay with me now. I'm going to call Lazarus for the benefits. Because, see, I could have left him in the grave. Jesus could have left him in the grave for his own benefit. He already knows what he can do, what the Father has said. He knows. So, therefore, it's not, it's, it's not for him. But I'm going to go to the grave and call Lazarus for the benefit of those around me so that they will believe and that others will believe from what they say. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm. Oh, Jesus. You see what I'm saying here? Uh, for the benefit of others, I am going to call Lazarus from the grave. That's what I'm going to do. And when he thus had spoken, he cried, 43rd verse, with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. He wanted everybody to hear him. Not Lazarus. He ain't got to call loud for Lazarus. He can call however he wants. Lazarus, Lazarus. But he's going to call loud for folk to hear. All the folk around. Call Lazarus to come forth. And he that was dead which is Lazarus, as we know, came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, loose him. 
and let him go. Do y'all know how much is packed in that 44th verse? That 44th verse is loaded. Have mercy. It's loaded, my Christian friends. Listen here. That 44th verse is loaded. Ah, loaded, loaded. Look, look. Lazarus, come forth in a loud voice. So everybody can hear. Lazarus, come forth. This man is talking to the dead man, been there four days. What is he doing? No doubt that man went through some people's minds. No doubt it might have went through some people's minds. It might have went through some people's minds. What is he doing? That man been there that great four days. What is he doing? Oh, he knows what he's doing. Calls him Lazarus, come forth. And then that last verse that we're going to discuss. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was abound, bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, loose him and let him go. First of all, we know that's how they buried the dead. They were bound, and we know that. They have gray clothes on, wrapped up like a mummy. Uh-huh. And then they got the thing over their face. That's how they buried them then. We don't do that now. Uh, we put a nice suit on them, a nice dress. And put the glasses on like y'all would do me. Put my glasses back on me. And, uh, you know, kind of, kind of give me a manicure. Yeah, fix my nails up there real good. And give me a good shave. I didn't give me a good shave. Fix me up real good. Put my hair. He looks good enough to bury. Yeah, I look good enough to bury now. Boy, you look good enough to die. If I'm good enough to bury, stick me in that ex too expensive, way too expensive uh, uh, coffin, a casket, and then let me down. But back then, they didn't do all that. Yeah, grave clothes they had, especially for that. Wrapped them up, kind of looking like a mummy, so to speak. I think that's about how they looked uh, similar to that anyway. Let's just say it like that. Similar. And uh, that's what they described here. And he that was dead came forth. This man walking came forth like a dead, looking like a dead man, wrapped up like a dead man. That's how they did it back then. Bound hand and foot with gray clothes. Face was bound about with a napkin. Now, you know, they're amazed. Suppose you saw a man get up out of the casket. Well, oh, my goodness. You wouldn't. Well, you probably wouldn't be still standing there. You might be gone. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. He comes forth. Hmm. Tells him, Lazarus, come forth. And at the word, at his word, just like when he created the world. Remember when he created the world? He didn't pick up a lot of stuff. He just spoke it into existence. He didn't pick up nothing until he made man. Before that, he spoke everything into existence. Spoke it. Spoke this life from death. He spoke life from death. And now, Lazarus has come forward. So in that 44th verse, you get how they dressed him. That means he bound, and it says bound. He can't get loose. He's bound. Jesus, what are we going to do? He's bound. Loose him and let him go. Take the grave clothes off. Jesus will loose us. He'll loose us. We won't be bound anymore. Not bound by the law. We're not bound by drugs, not bound by sin, not bound by any man, not bound by rituals, not bound by tradition. We're not bound anymore. Jesus will loose us. Did y'all know that? Jesus will loose us. That's what, that's what, that's what he'll do. <laughs> yes, a napkin. All, you can't even see his face. He's, he's bound. But Jesus says, loose him. And let him go. Huh. Oh my God. When Jesus is on the scene. Hallelujah. You can be loose. And let go. Loose. No longer bound. Y'all made me the song. I kind of had them words in it. No longer bound. Yeah. No more chains on holding me. Or something like that. That song. Y'all. Some of y'all probably know that song. Yeah. That's what you're going to be. When you meet Jesus, you ain't bound no more. 
life from death. You were, it seemed hopeless, right? Well, it was hopeless. Lazarus was already dead. It was hopeless. And that's the way it seems sometimes in some of our lives when things happen in, in our lives and we sometimes think it's hopeless. But if we're a child of God, it ain't never hopeless. <laughs> it ain't never hopeless. I don't care. That's, that's what this story is all about. That's what this story is telling us. It's a spiritual thing for us. It ain't a physical thing like it was for them in their Bible days. It's spiritual world. In the Old Testament, yeah, but, 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 but it's a spiritual thing Jesus is bringing on here. That's why he didn't understand until he, until he raised him from the dead. It's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing. If you believe in me, hallelujah, I'll bring life from death. If you believe in me, I'll bring life from death. Loose him. <laughs> loose him and let him go. With Jesus, you can be loose. If you got a bad boyfriend, ain't, like, ain't no good, loose you. You can be loose from him. Husbands, why? I don't care what you got. Friends, so-called friends. I don't care. Financial situation, things going on. You can be loosed from anything. Jesus and loose you. And that is what we have here. Life has been brought out of death. Glory of the Son of Man. The glory of God. Day and night. Light and darkness. Life from death. Resurrection and life. All of this has been in these 44 verses. Mm. My, my, my. Oh, my goodness. Think about it. Meditate on the word of God when you read it. Life. From death was the ultimate here for the glorification, the ultimate glorification of God mm. at the Son of Man. Son of Man. My goodness, my goodness. Son of Man. And that was said way back in the fourth verse of the 11th chapter that we're reading. This sickness is not in the death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Mm. So Jesus said death is not under death, and then he told them later that, <laughs> that he was sleeping. And they said, oh, if he's sleeping, he's all right. Then he said, well, he's dead. But I thought in the fourth verse, Jesus, you said it's not under death. That's why he first told him he was just sleeping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But to y'all, he's dead. Physically, he is dead. He is a dead man. Clinically, he is dead. But this sickness is not. Un he is only sleeping to God. Mm, life is not over. There's a pause here. And uh, he resurrected him in that 43rd uh, 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 verse. Well, I think that's the best for me to go here. We'll start a new thing, new topic on next Wednesday. Uh, I don't, I really don't have it all ready. I'll give it to you. But we're going we're gonna to discuss something else different. On next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. My, my, my. We'll introduce something new. Yes, on next Wednesday. I'm kind of torn between a couple of things. But, 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 but that's what we'll do. Next Wednesday. Wednesday. Jesus will bring life from death. Life from death. And that is what uh, 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 we need to remember about our relationship with Christ. It's never too late. And people think that that's what the world thinks that it's over. It never can be done. It's too late. And right now we got the coronavirus and all stuff going on and people think Oh, my goodness, my goodness, they just didn't have a hard time. But we as children of God, I pray God every day that he will manifest himself at all times unto us. That we know that our faith is not in vain and that he will always make a way out of no way for us. And even during these trying times, he will deliver us yet again. All right. So until next time. Until next time.
Remember the glorification of God, son of man, can bring life out of death. Yes, he can. 